morning guys it's nearly april which means it's the perfect time to start talking about spring books today i thought i'd share a list of classic novels that will revive in readers the spirit of springtime i should note that spring as a literary element is not just about change in the natural world it's not just about bunnies and flowers and sunshine in my mind spring is about spiritual and emotional and physical growth so, the perfect springtime novel celebrates childhood, youth, and coming of age. Spring as a season reflects positive life changes, and some of the most precious parts of life, infancy, innocence, and imagination. In spring, we emerge from hibernation into the big wide world, and thus stories of spring are accompanied by a sense of adventure, discovery, and wonder. Spring represents a blossoming, a coming into oneself, a becoming. And so springtime tales are rife with growing pains as well as some of the thrills and the delights of growing up. Perhaps most lovely of all, springtime is the perfect time of year to become re-enchanted with life and to return to those long past days of our girlhoods and boyhoods. And there is no better way to do so than through literature. So here is my list of beautiful springtime novels that encompass all of these themes. To start, I will begin with the novel that you're all expecting, which is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I mean, this book is so obvious, but I'm not going to apologize for it because it really is the perfect spring novel. It has all the necessary components. It has detailed attention to the natural wonders of springtime. It has a sense of enchantment with the blossoming earth. It explores themes of girlhood and boyhood. There are themes of exploration and discovery as the children discover the secret garden and make it their own world of dreams. And finally, there is a strong sense of renewal in all of the main characters. Mary and Colin are both miserable, wretched little children at the beginning of this book. In a sense, they are children of winter. They are lifeless, they are they're confined, they aren't very free, they don't have any lust for life. But as the springtime sets in in England, and as they stumble upon each other and then upon the secret garden, the two young cousins learn what it means to be children, they become connected to the outside natural world, and through these processes, they soften the wintered hearts of their guardians. This story is just beautiful. Every time I read it, I go from disliking to loving, Mary Mary, quite contrary, and you also have a profound sense of sympathy for little Colin. This book just brings to light the importance of being outside, the importance of being free to roam and to wonder and to imagine for children. The importance of children just being children and childhood being a very blessed and beautiful part of the human life. And it's really sad when children don't really get to experience their childhood, when they have to grow up too soon, when they're subject to so many difficult and dark things, and sometimes this can't be helped. So yeah, I just, I can't recommend The Secret Garden enough. Go read this. This should be number one on your springtime reading list. So next I want to talk about the Anne of Green Gables series. There are, I think, at least seven or eight books in this series by Ellen Montgomery, starting with Anne of Green Gables, then Anne of Avonlea, and then Anne of the Island, and so forth. These books are just classic tales of girlhood set in the whimsical Canadian countryside on the coast in Prince Edward Island. It's the most picturesque setting, but Anne is also a very dreamy, springtimey character. She's a girl of big dreams of an infinite sense of wonder and optimism for life and, and all the possibilities of life. Anne is enchanted with life and the world, even though she is an orphan and she experiences hardships. She continues to just embody the sense of spring, constantly striving to grow as an individual. She's constantly striving to love the people in her life and to love her calling, her work, to love her homeland. She is so deeply attached to the land itself, Green Gables in Prince Edward Island. Anyways, these stories are just so, so charming. They're full of beautiful descriptions of the landscapes of springtime in Prince Edward Island. There is a lot of outdoor adventuring and time spent reveling in nature. And this is just a perfect example of an exploration of girlhood, a coming of age tale about growing up, about embracing all that life has to offer, and just fully living your youth, and not even just your youth, but your whole life. And so yeah, highly recommend this series by Ellen Montgomery. Next I have The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This is also a very classic standard springtime book. It's recommended all the time because it has a very picturesque setting. If you've ever seen one of the illustrated versions of this book, the pictures are just gorgeous. You just feel like you are in the ultimate land of springtime. You know, there's cute forest animals. It's about mole and toad and badger, etc. 
it has great themes of friendship and camaraderie and love, growing up, growing up together, outdoor adventures, and so forth. Sadly, I don't actually have a copy of The Wind in the Willows, but it's on my list of two buys. I'm really hoping that I can find a nice used version, an antique version somewhere. So yeah, highly recommend that one as well. Um, next we have Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy. I read this novel uh, in university. I was first introduced to Thomas Hardy as an author in university, and to be honest, all of his novels are quite springtimey in the sense that they are very pastoral. They're very focused on the rural landscapes of the English countryside. They're very in tune with nature, descriptive in terms of natural settings in the natural world and about humanity's place within that world. However, the human themes in these novels are often quite serious and dark. But far from the matting crowd, perhaps the least so. I think it's probably the most upbeat, jovial Thomas Hardy novel, if you can call a Thomas Hardy novel jovial. In this book, there are themes of love and romance. You have Bathsheba Everdeen and Gabriel Oak and Mr. Boldwood. These men are vying for this independent young lady's heart. Even the names of the men are just like reminiscent of springtime, like Gabriel Oak, Mr. Boldwood. Like, they're so pastoral in themselves. Aside from the tranquil settings and the natural beauty in Far From the Madding Crowd, I think this novel is springtimey in the sense that it's really about character development and growth. A growing up of Bathsheba Everdeen and also of Gabrielle Oak. So Bathsheba learns lessons about herself and how she can change for the better, and Gabrielle learns lessons in love and perseverance and what it takes to win a woman's heart, a woman who has her own mind and her own life and her own ambitions. So yeah, it is a sweet romance set in the springtime in rural England, and so for that reason I highly recommend Far From the Madding Crowd and Thomas Hardy's other novels. Tess of the D'Urbervilles, although that one probably has the darkest themes, A Pair of Blue Eyes, The Return of the Native. Oh, Jude the Obscure is my all-time favorite, but I don't think I would classify that as a springtime novel. I think I'd call it an autumnal novel. So maybe I'll talk about that one in autumn. We will see. But Thomas Hardy, highly recommend any of his works. Next, I want to recommend Peter Pan, which is one of my all-time favorite children's classics. My husband and I are reading through it together right now, and it is just perfect for springtime. The novel is set in Neverland, where springtime returns as soon as Peter Pan returns. So when Peter comes home to Neverland with Wendy and John and Michael, spring comes alive on the island. And I like to think about this book in terms of the spring of the imagination. You've got themes of childhood wonder, the endless possibility of life, enjoyment in childhood and not wanting to grow up, but growing up in some senses nonetheless. Even Peter, the boy who never grows up, learns some things about himself and about others throughout the story. And you do see a little bit of character development. Not a ton, but a little bit in him, but a lot of character development in Wendy and the Lost Boys and John and Michael. I think Peter Pan is the ultimate novel about boyhood and youth and what it means to be a boy, what it means to be a child. You've got themes of exploration and adventure, of freedom and independence. Peter Pan is the ultimate example of imaginative escapism. Every time I read this book, I feel like I'm a child again, like I'm starting life over again and embarking into the great adventure of it with an infinite amount of opportunities and possibilities. As a young girl, I was in love with Peter Pan. I just loved who he was as a boy and I just wish that he would come to my window and whisk me off and that we could have a life of endless childhood and just enjoy the pleasures of that and just let our imaginations roam free. Anyways, do read Peter Pan this spring. It is perfect in every way. The next springtime novel is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This is just the classic growing up tale, the classic tale of girlhood and sisterhood and growing into womanhood. Each of the sisters, Meg, Joe, Amy, and Beth, exchange girlhood for womanhood, although not so much Beth. As spoiler alert, she passes away at a very young age. But each of these girls grows into themselves and they all become something different, which I love about this novel. You have Joe, the writer, you have Amy, the visual artist, and you have Meg, the mother, the actress, the kind of maternal figure. Each of these girls are distinctly themselves. Oh, and I can't forget Beth, the musical figure, although she doesn't grow up into womanhood, as I said. This book has high artistic quality. Like every time I read it, the language is just so beautiful. There are many springtime scenes 
lots of attention to the kind of the New England setting. We've got themes of hope and family and love and romance, and most of all of artistic longing and the process of growing into an artist. You have Jo growing into her writing. We witness the process of her becoming a writer. As a young girl, she's writing plays for her sister, she's writing novels, and then eventually she's writing stories for newspapers and she's getting published. She's realizing her genius, she's tapping into it, she's on the brink of success as a writer. She has no idea where her career will go, but she has big dreams and hopes and aspirations. She learned some hard lessons along the way. Ugh. Everything about Jo March's journey as a writer appeals to me, but of course there is so much more to Little Women as you have the other sisters as well. So yeah, I highly recommend the story of girlhood and its challenges and its beauties and its pleasures. Next I have My Antonia by Willa Cather. I think this one is probably less well known than the other ones, but I read this in university and was very pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed Cather's writing and how much the story of Antonia actually appealed to me. In this book, you have that deep connection with nature on the American frontier, Midwestern America. You have themes of growing into adulthood. Antonia has to get married. She has to raise a family. This is just kind of part of becoming an adult and part of surviving on the frontier. But Antonia embodies the spirit of freedom. She pioneers her way forward. She's a very strong-willed woman with big dreams and deep hope and optimism and faith in the American dream and the good things of life, and the good that can come out of her life if she just works hard enough. But ultimately, the most beautiful thing about this novel, I think, is just the emphasis on the simple pleasures of life, the little things that give life meaning. You have the rhythms of the seasons, the coming of springtime, but you also just have the rhythms of life. And the rhythms of life and nature coincide in a very beautiful way in this book, and so I highly recommend it. Next, I want to talk about The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is just the ultimate story of journey and adventure and self-discovery. You have Bilbo leaving the safe Shire for the big wide world. He's been tucked away in the Shire his whole life, as if in winter, cozy, secluded. And then he goes out across Middle Earth and experiences all the pain and glory that comes with that. There's a strong sense of wonder here. As Bilbo becomes brave, he leaves his comfort zone and he realizes how much the world outside the Shire actually has to offer him. You've got themes of wonder and discovery as he encounters Middle-earth's creatures and places. And then you also have the themes of homecoming and rebirth. Bilbo comes home from his adventure, back to the Shire, back to his safe place. And the Shire is kind of representative of rural England, springtime countryside. But he comes back a changed man and he doesn't quite fit into that anymore. It's as if he's left behind his childhood to become a man. And he is a new person. But at the same time, he can still enjoy the pleasures of the Shire again. He can still be reminded of his childhood and of the sweet things of that life. And so yeah, highly recommend The Hobbit. The next book I want to recommend is The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Again, a story of boyhood and adventure. It involves many outdoor activities like fishing and swimming and playing games outside. You've got themes of freedom and independence. You know, Tom, he resists authority. He doesn't want to listen to the adults in his life. He loves being a boy and loves having the freedom to run about and do his own thing. He longs for the earth to be his own. In a way, Tom Sawyer actually kind of reminds me of Peter Pan in that sense. And then you also have themes of friendship and community. So you have Tom with his friend Huck Finn and his other friend Joe Harper. And their friendship just really highlights the spirit of boyhood and springtime in my opinion. The best thing in life is true friendship and these boys really embody that. They're united in their boyhood and in their youth. They celebrate that together, they enjoy that together. And so yeah, it's actually been quite a while since I've read Tom Sawyer. I read it as a little girl. I read Huck Finn as well. And so I'm hoping to reread them this spring to really understand what they're all about because yeah, I definitely can't talk about them with authority as it's been so long since I've read them. But I do think they are perfect springtime classics, so let me know if you're going to give them a read as well. And then finally, The Little House on the Prairie series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Oh, this series is just so nostalgic for me because I grew up as a little girl watching the show, reading the books, because they appealed so much to me as a child and as a girl. I mean, there's the obvious connection to nature in the American Midwest. The Ingalls live rurally in the country. They enjoy life's simple pleasures of living with family, of picking wildflowers in the meadow. The girls, Laura, Mary, and Carrie, experience the whimsical girlhood things. They enjoy sisterhood. This book is also a celebration of homesteading, building a home, a safe and peaceful place 
for when to live with their family. And they build this home in nature. They kind of become one with the land in a sense. They harvest it, they take care of it, etc. And again, this series really brings to light the rhythms of nature as you see the angles go through spring, summer, fall, winter, time and time again throughout the years, but also just the rhythms of life, the rhythms of growing up, of being an adult and growing older, getting very old and dying. All these things are captured in this series. So again, it's been so long since I've read this. And these books are meant for children, so they are definitely not a difficult read. Very simple, childish stories in a sense. Because these books just inspire such nostalgia and longing in me, for me that's what a springtime book should do. To bring me back to the springtime of my life, my girlhood, and remind me of all those beautiful hopes, beautiful feelings that you had as a child when you were innocent and full of imagination and just, and all the endless possibilities of life were open to you. So that concludes my list of springtime recommends. I will say that most of Jane Austen's novels also fit into this category. I've heard great things about The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which perhaps might be classified as a springtime novel as well, although I haven't read it yet. I did buy it a couple weeks ago, so hopefully I can get to that sometime this spring as well. And then, of course, as I was saying, the Thomas Hardy books. And also, perhaps, Jules Verne. Jules Verne. Jules Verne. Jules Verne? Jules Verne? Anyways, Around the World in 80 Days is one of my favorite books. And it's, it's also very springy because it's the tale about adventure and leaving one safe place for the big wide world and just enjoying the thrills and the excitement that life can offer. So that concludes this video. Um, I'm still in the process of reading Dostoevsky novels and I will be keeping you updated as I finish them. I'll be posting discussions and my thoughts on these novels, so stay tuned to that if you're following along for the year of Dostoevsky. I'll also be posting updates on my journey doing my master's at the University of Edinburgh. And finally, I have started a Buy Me a Coffee page. If you appreciate my videos at all, I would so appreciate it if you went over there and bought me a coffee, just made a little contribution. Writing and filming and editing YouTube videos is a lot of work, and I love doing it so, so much, but it's so hard to fit into my schedule. And I would love to one day be able to adjust my schedule to kind of cater more to my YouTube channel, but that will only be possible if I can get some kind of monetary support along the way. There's no pressure at all. You are not obligated to. But if you are feeling so kind, I would highly appreciate it if you went over to that page and bought me a coffee. I love coffee, as you know, I drink it all day long. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video and for your continued support of my channel. Hope you guys are having an awesome spring. I hope you end up getting lots of time to read and hopefully tackle some of these classics that I've shared in this video. Happy spring, everybody. And happy Easter. Praise God for Jesus Christ who died for us. So happy Easter to you all.